Are you just starting out in storage or going into a meeting to discuss about it and you don't actually want to sound like a newbie? Then this video is just what you need. So today, I'm going to give you a crash course in storage performance and I hope that at the end of this video, you will sound like a storage expert. IOPS, latency and bandwidth are terms storage and data professionals love to throw around every conversation. In a nutshell, these are terminologies used to measure the performance of storage systems. Trust me when I say this, most storage folks will often suss out if an individual knows anything about storage by throwing out a few discussion points around IOPS, latency, and bandwidth. If you don't catch it well, you have almost instantly lost all credibility. I know, storage folks are judgy. Let's get you all skilled up. And we will begin with IOPS. IOPS is the acronym for Input Output Operations Per Second. In the world of storage I.O., or better known as input and output, I.O. is often defined as a storage transaction. So what kind of traffic is classified as in and what's out? Essentially, everything that is sent to the storage is considered going into the storage and everything that is sent out from the storage is considered leaving the storage. Typically, ins are often made up of traffic writing data and outs are made up of traffic reading or retrieving data. So if your storage is capable of handling very high IOPS, it is deemed that the storage is very performant and is able to process many concurrent transactions. In modern day computing, it is common to see laptops and desktops doing between 1000 to 2000 IOPS and large storage systems in the data center capable of doing upwards of a million IOPS. Next, Let's look at latency. Latency is the time it takes to complete one I.O. It is often measured in milliseconds or MS. In case you are wondering how many milliseconds are there in one second, the answer is 1000. So if you took the previous learning of IOPS and then you add in latency, you actually get a better definition of what performance is. Just to give you an example, a storage that performs 1000 IOPS with an average latency of 10 milliseconds compared to a storage that does the same 1000 IOPS in 1 millisecond, which storage is faster? And you're right, the one that did it in 1 millisecond. They have both done 1000 IOPS, but the latter does it 10 times faster. So think of it like a car. Which car goes from 0 to 60 faster? A Ferrari might be able to do it in 3 seconds and a Prius may be able to do it in 7 seconds. Same thing with storage. So if you're enjoying some of this content, don't forget to drop a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I'll truly appreciate the support. Now that you have a good understanding of IOPS and latency, the last measurement of performance is throughput. Throughput is essentially a multiplication of block size and IOPS. So what is a block? So every single data that is transported is typically broken down into small chunks to ease transmission. These chunks are what we call blocks. Unfortunately, different applications have different chunk or block sizes. For example, database transactions typically will have between 4K and 8K block sizes, and it's not uncommon for the batch processors, backup traffic, um, video files to have 256K and 512K blocks. Block sizes play a significant part in storage performance. Larger block sizes usually take a longer time to process and that in turn also leads to potentially uh, added latency to read and write operations. So how does this impact IOPS you might think? It's very common to see a significant decrease in IOPS if the payload is a large block like 256K or 512K. Comparatively, if a 4K block is used, it is going to be much, much faster. For example, if a 4K block size is the payload, the storage may be able to achieve 10,000 IOPS. But if it's a 1 megabyte block size, the storage may be able to perform 250 IOPS. But throughput isn't about that though. Throughput is about the measurement of actual data that's being transmitted. Taking the same example, the 4K block, if you multiply that by 10,000 IOPS, will come to a total of 40 megabytes per second transfer rate. And the one megabyte multiplied by 250 IOPS will total up to 250 megabytes per second. So depending on which angle you are evaluating and measuring performance from, the definition of performance becomes slightly different. Are you confused yet? How is it that 
so many terms just to measure storage performance. So under what circumstances and use cases do you use each and every one of these terminologies? Looking at a single metric alone will never give you a holistic representation of performance. So don't be fooled by storage vendors touting max IOPS numbers because they are irrelevant in most cases. Much like how it's pointless someone selling me a Prius on their top speed. It is highly dependent on how many passengers I'm ferrying and on what roads I'll be driving it on. Hopefully this has been useful and you have a better understanding of what this all means and can go sound like a performance guru now. Thanks again for dropping by and I hope to see you in the next video.